Hello everyone, my name is Denise. This morning I'll be talking about 80. But before I continue, I'd like to do a short prayer with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you yet again, O God. This is a day that you have made and I, we will rejoice and be glad in it, Father. We thank you for yet another opportunity, O God, to come before you to speak, Father God, as you've revealed these words unto me, O God. Lord, I pray, God, that you will intervene. I pray, God, that you will have your way, O God. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we know that there is nothing that is too hard for you. O God, we can do nothing without you, O God. And so, Father, I pray, God, that you will have mercy. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray, Father, for every soul this morning who will choose to receive you, O God as you ace in their footsteps to do so before it's too late for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray, and I tell you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, amen. Right, as I've said this morning, my title is called, or I'll be speaking this morning about 80. On the 22nd of January, 24, the Lord allowed me to hear spiritually that something was happening in 80 and things are not the way it should be. It was affecting the old Caribbean. He said there will be no more Caribbean, I heard spiritually. And I heard that there were conflicts in 80. And so, you know, the word of the Lord tells us in the scripture, in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land, says the Lord. And so let us pray for 80 that they will cry out and seek the Lord and turn and God will hear them. For I heard spiritually that there will be no more Caribbean. It's talking about 80, the conflict that was happening or is happening now in 80. I'm speaking about 80 because the Lord has allowed me to hear what is happening there. And when I looked in the media to see what is going on, the country is as though it doesn't exist anymore. And it's not just affecting 80, but it's affecting or will affect the whole Caribbean. And so the Lord has brought it to my attention or allowed me to hear, you know, the people speaking of what is spiritually. And so brethren, let us pray that the people of 80 will realize and that they will turn back to the Lord and that they will seek the Lord. We pray also for those gang members that they will turn to the Lord and that they will seek him for they are trying to do things in their own strength and it will never work. It can never work. Where God is not involved, it is finished. Basically, that's what God is saying. And so brethren, let us pray let us pray for the people of 80, for they will need to do the work. I know we will pray for them and we can pray for them, but they too have to come to the realization that they need a savior, which is the almighty God who can turn things around for them. The people of 80 suffering just like other parts of the world. We have Ukraine, we have Russia, Israel, we have the Palestinian. There's so many that we have to pray for, that God will have his way, that God will intervene, for we can do nothing without him. And so, brethren, let us pray and remember these countries, especially Haiti, because God has brought it to my attention at this time. I've done other prophecies where I've spoken about, you know, Russia. I saw fighter jets have done prophecies about that, that this would happen. 
I've done prophecies about Israel also. And so this now God is talking or allowing me to hear about 80. And so this is a reason why I'm speaking about them at this time. And so brethren, let us pray. Let us cry out to God that they will understand, realize and that they will turn to the Lord, that he will be able to deliver them and to help them and to heal them from whatever they are going through. Okay, brethren, these are my few words for today, but I would like to say if there's anyone who don't know Jesus as their personal savior, I want to encourage you this morning to do so before it's too late for you. Tomorrow is not promised to you, it's not promised to any of us and you could die in your sins at any time. And so I want to encourage you this morning to turn to the Lord again and to seek him in truth before it's too late for you. There are also those who were once with Christ, but they've now turned away from the faith. I want to encourage you also to turn to the Lord and to seek him again in truth before it's too late for you. As I've said, what will it profit you to gain this whole world and to lose your soul? There are also those who are still professing the faith, but they are lukewarm. They have one foot in and one foot out, still doing the things of this world and the things of God. I want to encourage you also to turn away from the things of this world and to seek the Lord in truth, remembering that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are a kingdom people. And so let us live a life that is pleasing, that is worthy and that is acceptable unto God, that his name will be glorified and that souls will be saved for the kingdom of God because of the life that we live here on this earth. Remembering also that the word of the Lord tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, that they will not perish, but have everlasting life through Christ Jesus God has given his only son for the world that they should not perish. And so this morning, I want to encourage someone, encourage someone, remembering also that the word of the Lord warns us that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life is through Christ Jesus. These are my few words for today. Thank you for listening. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.